Well, welcome to our webinar. Today I, I want to talk about studying in Germany with an IB. So it's, it's a super improvised low-tech uh, solution, but now you are just looking at my screen. <laughs> so at least you can uh, enjoy some of the presentation. This, this first slide is only there because I always forget to introduce myself. So my name is Georg Verweyen and I am director of the DAAD Information Center in Thailand. Um, well, I'm, uh, I've been here for five years and I must say I'm very happy to be here. And um, yeah, what is the DAAD? We'll uh, talk about that in a second. Um, well, you can see it's, uh, it is an independent organization of the German universities. Yeah, so uh, it is a non-profit organization. We are not making any money. It is not really a government organization, but the whole purpose of this is really to represent German universities abroad. German universities do not uh, enjoy the luxury of um, having offices in every country, but they joined forces and uh, tried to uh, get this representation um, in, a, in a joint effort. So we, um, yeah, we uh, just do that job for all the universities. And I'm honestly, I, I just try to find the best university for your purpose um, whenever you ask me for any advice. I am I don't have any personal um, affiliation with any university or any um, bias towards this or that one. So um, yeah, we've got a few offices here in the region, as you can see. Um, the DAAD itself is the German abbreviation for German Academic Exchange Service, and uh, we've got three pillars. So. Uh, the best known pillar probably is the uh, scholarships for the best. We have got the mandate and the money from the German government, from different ministries, to provide scholarships to the best students and the best scholars, researchers. And um, yeah, we've been doing that for quite some time and quite successfully, which makes us the biggest scholarship donor worldwide. Uh, but we also provide uh, structures for internationalization. So we assist universities in setting up their international um, relations. We provide uh, a marketplace like education fairs, etc., in Germany. And uh, we provide, thirdly, expertise for academic cooperation. So we provide information for the universities in Thailand and in Germany and elsewhere, of course. And um, we also provide information for students. Yeah, so uh, that's you uh, or that's your students. So um, that's, uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah, we, we just try to, to make a good match. You should be aware of what you can do in Germany and what you can't do. Um, you should know which university does what best. And you should know that this is the place where you can come and ask your questions when you're interested in studying in Germany. Yeah, so that's really what we're talking about today. Uh, well, that's Germany. Um, it's, it's mainly there because you can see that, um, yeah, it's a country in the center of Europe. Uh, you can travel around pretty easily once the travel restrictions have been uh, eased. I hope that will be the case rather soon. So uh, I think within the Schengen region, things are opening up. So you can now, from Germany, travel again to the Netherlands, to Belgium, to Luxembourg, to France. Um, so we are, we are working on that carefully. Um, yeah. 
So this, uh, this slide is there just to confuse you. Uh, nobody can read all those little um, cities uh, I'm aware. So this, this German map that you see here is just there to show you that we have universities everywhere. So in contrast to other countries, the universities do not stick to big cities. Now there is, um, there is a saying that uh, many cities have a university, but the University of Marburg has a city. Yeah, so the, the city of Marburg is basically the university plus a few houses around it. Yeah, it's, it's not a big city, it's really um, a small town with a big university and I think one third of the people are students, one third of the people are working at the university and the other third are probably retired, or I don't know. Yeah, anyway. So uh, you don't need to stick with the big names. Yeah, it's, um, if you want high quality education, then um, I would always go for the program that best suits you. You don't have to um, go to, to Munich or to, to Berlin or to Hamburg just because you know the city and you think that must be the best university. Out of those 20,000 academic programs, roughly 10% are taught entirely in English. That means you don't need any German language um, proficiency. Of course, German is helpful uh, if you want to study there, but it is not a requirement. Of course, it's, it's pretty cool yeah, if you're not only um, able to, to speak English, uh, but it's, it's pretty good to just add another language to your resume. And uh, yeah, German still is quite an important language, yeah, especially business-wise. Um, if you think about uh, the uh, business relations with Thailand, for instance, the trade between Thailand and France and France and Thailand, plus the trade with Thailand and England and England and Thailand, is still less than the trade with Germany alone. Yeah, so Germany is a big trade partner and um, yeah, the language can get you quite far. Uh, you'll find that Germany is one of the countries with the most international um, higher education scene. Um, roughly 12% international students, uh, one third of them from Asia. And the special thing is that Germany is uh, not just attracting international students, like Australia, for instance. Yeah, you have a ridiculous high number, I think 35% international students in Australian universities. Um, but Germany is also sending students abroad. Yeah, so if you go to any university worldwide, chances are good that you'll find uh, German students there. Okay, so <laughs> coming back to my advertisement block, uh, yeah, there, there were a few rankings. People love rankings, and so I thought, okay. Um, so when you ask students about their place of preference to study, then Germany regularly comes out on top. Um, it's, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of criteria like, hey, how do you deal with international students? and how does the admission work, and what are the requirements, and whatever, and grand total is uh, Germany is always somewhere in the top. And um, particularly uh, financially, yeah, Germany is just very affordable. So if you look, the most affordable country is Poland, but then I don't speak Polish, and there are not many English programs. Serbia, Hungary, so if you look, okay, so Germany is price-wise anywhere in the range of, Poland, uh, of Portugal 
and Lithuania. Yeah, so it's it's definitely much more affordable to study in Germany than to study in France or uh, in Italy or um, or Christ's sake yeah, in the United Kingdom, which is just very expensive for European standards and definitely uh, the United States uh, is top of the list uh, when it comes to charging enormous tuition fees. So um, usually students get along well with 800, maybe 850 euros per month um, unless you choose a, an expensive city. Yeah? So for Munich or Hamburg, I think you should rather plan with uh, 1,000 euros. Okay, final, final advertisement. Um, I, I love that statistic. Uh, so in general popularity of countries worldwide, uh, the US news country ranking has Germany among the top five for the last, I don't know, six, seven years. And uh, so in the last ranking, we came out number four. But that is not the funny bit. Yeah? It's not surprising that we are good in entrepreneurship and good quality of life, etc. But the most funny thing is actually that uh, we are scoring extremely low in adventure. <laughs> so if, if you're looking for an adventure, just don't go to Germany. Yeah? So Germans are uh, highly predictable. Uh, usually they just say what they think and they say what they are going to do and it's um, yeah it's it's rather direct style of communication and also the administration is very predictable it's not always fun you know it's it's not that um, but at least you know what you get yeah it's it's easy to tell upfront so usually you don't um, get big surprises when you deal with uh, with Germany. Okay. So we, we already spoke about money briefly. Uh, how does the funding uh, work? Mm. Well, surprisingly, all tuition fees are covered by the German government. That's, um, it sounds too good to be true, uh, but of course uh, it is not true. <laughs> uh, it's, but it applies to all students, so also for non-European students, uh, for European students of course, for German students, doesn't matter. Cost of living is around 850 euros per month. And that is including everything. Yeah? So that includes the, the rent you pay and the food you need and your transport and travel costs and books for the university and um, everything. Uh, as I said, okay, when it sounds too good to be true, it's not true. So there is a tiny bit of small print. Uh, there are two exceptions to the rule. Private universities do charge tuition fees and quite significant. And public universities charge tuition fees for non-consecutive master's programs. I mean, now you're looking for bachelors, so forget about this for a moment. Non-consecutive, that is, for instance, when you study social sciences and then at some point you think, hey, wow, actually I need an MBA, you know, for, for my career I just need that MBA. And you have not done business studies before, but now suddenly you feel like needing an MBA. So that is non-consecutive and that means that you have to pay. Yeah, these tuition fees are not covered by uh, the German taxpayer. And then you see, okay, uh, Bad Württemberg, that's this one uh, Land down here, you know, Germany is 16 Länder, and this one, uh, this one Land, Bad Württemberg, this one region, uh, does charge tuition fees for non-EU students. 
So even if you don't have a European passport, uh, you can study in Germany in an English program with absolutely no tuition fees. Just avoid the uh, region of Baden-Württemberg down here. You have heard that the tuition fees will be much higher for non-EU students. That is just uh, wrong. Yeah, uh, It is true for many countries. It is true for uh, Sweden, for instance, one of the very few countries without tuition fees. Sweden only charges non-EU students, uh, but it is not true for Germany. Now, Germany just does not charge tuition fees in like 90% of the cases. I mean, you see the, ex the exemptions here, but uh, otherwise, uh, no tuition fees, no matter where you come from. Okay, so what about safety? Um, it's, uh, it's difficult times and um, yeah, well, Germany is one of the safest countries in Europe. Yeah, no matter what metric uh, you look at, um, there is the number of any sort of crime is, is really low. Um, the crime rates in Germany have been falling for the last 20 years. Uh, and, um, well, that's the most recent update. Uh, Germany has an extremely good health system. Yeah? Um, these are the, the numbers of uh, COVID-confirmed deaths, seven-day average. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, okay, we all know that Thailand has hardly any cases. That, that's really great. Um, and then I have just put some typical uh, destinations to study abroad in this list. And you can see uh, Germany is down here with about one death in a million, slightly less. Uh, and then France already has three times as many cases, as many deaths. Canada about four times, United States and, well, United Kingdom has, I think, about seven times as many uh, cases as Germany. So if you want high quality education and you want to study in English abroad, then probably, uh, and you are worried about uh, coronavirus uh, infections, then probably Germany is your safest uh, bet right now. Yeah. So you can see that this whole uh, flattening the curve uh, thing has worked really well in Germany, and um, yeah, we we have been treating uh, other EU patients in critical condition. Um, so we've flown in, I think, a hundred or so cases from the Netherlands and Italy, and um, yeah, kept on importing, let's say, patients in critical conditions because. The German health system has an extremely high number in intensive care beds available, and uh, we've been never anywhere near the capacity. Okay, so let's let's see how do we uh, how do we go ahead? How do we find a um, a study program? Yeah, we uh, we have just created a new database. Before we had this uh, study in Germany and uh, we had the international programs and it was a bit split up. I mean, it was already quite good because it's just one central website, one central resource where we have all the information, uh, but it has gotten even better. So we have now united uh, both the German programs and the international programs and the application process for scholarships, uh, once you reach that level, uh, into one big database. So that is the website myguide.de. Myguide.de, it's, it's super simple. You can see here, you have three questions. Um, what are your interests? That is basically the subject area. Then, uh, which degree are you aiming for? Uh, so let's say a bachelor's. And then the preferred language. That can be 
German or uh, can be English. So if we, um, maybe we just go there for a second. Uh, so, um, gateway to your German university. So you, let's say, well, I just started here with engineering and you want to do a bachelor and uh, you want to do that in English. So you can click here. Um, so it, it gets even easier if you register because then, um, well, uh, yeah, you can find back your, uh, uh, your preferred universities, etc. cetera. It's, um, it's getting easier, but you can also use it without any login if you like. Yeah, so th this shows us that we've got 43 engineering programs in Germany for bachelors taught in English. Yeah. And uh, the nice thing is that you can, um, well, just click on those links and you get a lot of information on the, uh, on the programs. You can see uh, the requirements, uh, where do you log in, um, where, where, do, where do you apply, website of the universities. Um, so this is provided by the universities. Some of them provide a lot of information. Some provide a few, uh, a little less. So uh, Rhein-Waal University of Applied Science, that's a very nice, uh, relatively small University of Applied Science, and they have totally focused on international students. So all the programs are taught in English. Um, a very modern, uh, small university. I really like this approach. Um, yeah, so you can you can see, uh, yeah, you can just uh, go through all the results. Um, and in this case, you see here, they mention 660 euros tuition fees. That is uh, per month. Yeah, so that is one of the cases where they do charge tuition fees. Rheinwahl is a public one, so they do not charge uh, tuition fees. Uh, business and engineering, very interesting uh, combination, I believe. Uh, no tuition fees. Um, electrical computer engineering. So Jacobs University, that's a, it's a great university, honestly. Um, and they provide a lot of extra services, so you will um, yeah, have somebody who takes care for, of your um, housing when you uh, enroll at the university, etc. So there's more services attached than typically at a German university, but it comes at a, a price tag of 20,000 euros. Um, so um, yeah, Germany really provides a whole range. I wouldn't say that uh, the private universities are better than the public universities, but in most cases they provide more services around your um, studies. So that is my guide. It's, it's really useful. Um, you can find, well, as I said, 20,000 programs taught in German and about 2,000 programs taught entirely in English. And uh, somebody did the maths and had a look, and even if you only look at the programs taught in English, uh, still more than two-thirds of those programs don't charge any tuition fees. Yeah? So you can have the best of both worlds. If, if you have found a university, then um, yeah, the question comes up, okay, where do I apply? Uh, that can be a bit confusing because it depends on um, the, uh, your status. Yeah? First of all, the question is, does the subject that you have, that you want to study, is there a limited admission? 
In Germany, we call it numerus clausus, so that's Latin and means uh, closed number. Yeah? And if there is an NC, a numerus clausus, uh, a cap, uh, then the question is, do you have a German school leaving certificate, an Abitur, or at a German school abroad or something, or are you a, an EU citizen? Yeah, so if you are, let's say, Swedish, and you did your IB uh, at um, Patana uh, in Bangkok, and then you want to study in Europe, then you fall into that category of um, EU citizens or people with a German higher education uh, admission. In that case, uh, you go to uh, hochschulstart.de. Now, it's, it's terrible, uh, it's hardly impossible to read, but it's hochschulstart.de. So that's the case for the, for the Germans and for Europeans. And if you are a non-EU citizen and you don't have a German school certificate, and uh, or the university has a uh, local or no numerous clauses, then you can uh, you have to ask the university whether you apply directly to the university or you apply to uni assist yeah so there is a centralized admission platform for non eu students called uni assist i'll also type that in the uh, comments uni assist and uh, UniAssist deals with all those complicated uh, certificates. Yeah? A typical German admission officer at a university doesn't know how a high school admission thingy from Peru looks like, or what, what does a secondary degree from Uganda look like. Yeah? And I mean, to avoid those questions, all the applications from far abroad, they just go to UniAssist if the university participates. Yeah? So there are universities participating and others don't. And there is no rule of thumb to decide. You know, you just have to ask them, hey, do you take my application directly or should I send it through UniAssist? Um, Typically, German universities don't uh, fuzz around with, uh, with uh, all those letters. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't charge tuition fees and they don't have any budget for complicated discussions. So they want to have it simple and fast and they prefer to you know just look at the grades and then have a ranking and well who comes first gets a place and if you're late then well bad luck yeah so um german universities most cases they just look at the grades which means that the process is super simple and this allows german universities to have an application window from may to mid-July. Yeah? It might be open even longer this year because of uh, Corona, yeah? uh, but normally it's open from May till mid-July. Um, and uh, for the non-EU students, there are separate quotas, so it might even improve your chances if you are from Thailand uh, because it's a small country and, you know, they have different considerations. Yeah, they all want to have more international students. That's, that's always good for a university. And they don't want to have only students from one nationality. So they don't want to fill up the entire course with uh, Chinese or Indian students. But coming from a small country, may be a big benefit in this application process. Uh, 
Okay, so let's be more specific about the IB. You may have heard about the T shape of um, yeah, the T shape of the IB. That's a very famous thing in marketing for the International Baccalaureate. They always say, yeah, you know, we provide very broad education, and then you have this uh, vertical stroke of the T where you can specialize. So those are your three uh, subjects in higher level. Compare this to the Cambridge A levels. In, in A levels, you just pick three higher level subjects, let's say, and then you can have one minor subject and that's it. They are not related. There is no overarching um, broad education, but that's, that's what you get in the IB. And the German Abitur is even more so uh, overarching, so you have to cover all areas of study and you take two subjects in higher level. Actually, you take two extra levels in something like a lower level, well, anyway. Um, yeah, it is comparable to the IB, but the uh, horizontal stroke of the T is even more important than in the International Baccalaureate. And this leads to the requirements. It's a game of let's pretend to be in Germany. Yeah. Uh, if you want your IB recognized in Germany, you have to pretend that you are actually studying a German Abitur. So you need one foreign language and then another language. You need one natural science. You need mathematics. It doesn't matter which type of mathematics. I always mess up the name, uh, so I know that there are two flavors. Yeah? One is more theoretical, one is more practical. It doesn't matter which one. Both are fine, but you have to have mathematics. Um, you need one social science, and then there is one tiny subject for your free choice. So that's the six subjects that you need to cover. And then that's usually this bit is the most tricky one. You have to have maths or biology or chemistry or physics on higher level. One of them must be on higher level. Mm. And this feels particularly unfair to those of you who want to study languages or culture and think, hey, maths, I don't care. Why, why, why do I want with physics? You know, I, I don't like numbers. And unfortunately, um, this means that your IB will not be automatically recognized. It means that the conference of German university rectors does not recommend the recognition of such an IB. So I'm, I'm choosing my words very carefully here. Yeah, it is just a recommendation. So this recommendation can be overruled by the university. The university is very free in Germany in admitting uh, students and picking students. And uh, this means if you want to study dance and you don't have higher level maths, the university may say, OK, you know what? Maths, you want to dance? Sure, we don't need maths. Um, but it will be more difficult. Yeah? And uh, plan B could mean that you have to take uh, the Feststellungsprüfung, which is an, an extra exam 
uh, comparable to redoing your IB exams. Yeah, so that's that's pretty uh, substantial. Um, and this will be including maths. Um, yeah, so that's that's typically a very unfortunate thing. If we have people who are very good in maths, they may not have the two languages. And if we have people who are very good in languages, they may not have the maths higher level requirement. That is, um, that's the problem with this, you know, this T shape. So in Germany, you have to cover all subjects evenly and you have to have a strong maths, biology, something, natural sciences, and also languages and social sciences. So um, that's typically the, the tricky part. Um, it is especially tricky with UniAssist because UniAssist, those are people who don't look at your case. They don't look at the university. They just look at the recommendations. Yeah, so they see, oh, international baccalaureate, uh, language, tick, 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 tick. Whoa, no higher level maths. Bang, out. Yeah, so UniAssist is just ticking boxes. That is their business. They are good at ticking boxes, but um, the, um, the secret, <coughs> the secret is you have to complain about the ruling. If they tell you, hey, sorry, but you can't study dance if you don't have physics, uh, then you complain about that decision. And then they tell you, yeah, we have checked it, but no, you can't. And then you complain again. And if and when you complain twice about the decision of UniAssist, your application will be forwarded to the university. And that is the point where you can start talking to human beings with uh, something like common sense. Yeah? So if you explain your case to the university, they might overturn the recommendations and you can be admitted and enrolled at the university. Yeah, language requirements. Um, so if you if you study um, if you study in English most universities accept the, the big uh, tests, yeah, mainly TOEFL and IELTS. And in most cases, the requirement for English is IELTS 6.5 overall. Um, exceptions can be made. Yeah? You can try and say, hey, look, I'm from an IB school and I've had English um, language and literature in my IB, uh, they may exempt you from the language test. Uh, the same goes if you study in German language. If you say, well, hey, look, first of all, I am German, which, by the way, doesn't help at all. And secondly, I've, I've got uh, German as, as my A language for those two years, and I've got good grades you might be exempted. But honestly, to be on the safe side, especially if you're slightly late in applying or whatever, I would always prefer to take a test um, at the Goethe Institute or at, at British Council or whatever. And you know, just, just put the test in there. I mean, if you are really good in a language, if German is your mother tongue, you don't have to prepare Really, yeah. I mean, look at the test format once or twice, and and then you just go there, and you know, it's 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 one morning or one afternoon, and yeah, it's a few. I mean, it costs some money, but that can save you the trouble of missing out on on a whole semester or, or two. And I would I would always prefer to have that language test, and. Um, and the same goes for English, right? If, if you have done your IB in English, 
for Christ's sake, just register at at British Council and and do that test, and you know you're done. Um, yeah, as I said, exceptions can be made. It's up to the university. It might be in the requirements that they just say, "Hey, look, that's you know, if you come from these schools and if you have these requirements, then you don't. Otherwise, we need IELTS." But it can also be just made ad hoc by the uh, admission officer. But my suggestion is always just take the test. It's it's always useful to have that for your uh, resume and um, yeah, don't don't run the risk of somebody complaining that, hey, well, you missed the, the language requirement, so you can't. And, and. Yeah, so that is, um, that is my, my presentation. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it's just a, a, an introduction. Um, I have more uh, things that I can show you. So um, I would say, um, so typically people ask uh, about, um, about ranking. So which German university should I take? Uh, I already uh, told you that I would always go for, a, for an interesting program. Yeah? So you can have uh, boring study programs at a very good university and you can have really exciting study programs at, uh, at a, well, less well-known university. And honestly, for, for your bachelors, um, I mean, the, the president of the uh, Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich, so the highest ranking university, he said like six years ago during a public speech, hey guys, for undergraduate studies and maybe even for masters, it doesn't really care where you study. It doesn't matter where you study in Germany. Of course, the, the PR department was not happy with that statement. Yeah? So he, he had to uh, kind of um, trying to, to get back and um, that, well, essentially, yes, he, it's true, yeah? It's true, it doesn't really matter where you study in Germany. If you, if you do civil engineering, really, I think you just get a very good education at any German University of Applied Science or German University, yeah? So don't, don't bother too much about the reputation of that university. I think the, the reputation of the university is more interesting, really, um, when it comes to masters and uh, PhD and research. Yeah, but otherwise, I would always go for a university that I personally feel um, is interesting. So um, that's uh, that's that's my my impression. Um, yeah, well, but if you say, okay, well, yeah, let's say, so what, what do I do? Yeah, I, I, I found like four or five, or if you, if you want to study in German, you might find 20 universities offering uh, civil engineering. So um, I would uh, have a look at the university. Do you want to go into a big town or a small town? Is there any region that we prefer? Um, but okay, if, if you insist on, yeah, but I want a ranking, yeah, <clears throat> I would suggest that you look at the CHE ranking. So the, uh, the CHE ranking is now hosted by uh, Zeit. Well, um, Let me see if I can, nah. now we've lost that. So if you go to rankingsite.de, I'll try to copy that into the, into the chat. 
Yeah, so for the guys on Facebook, I uh, will post that link later, or maybe um, is that a point you could do that? So it's ranking dot site z e i t dot d e slash c h e slash e n slash. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's a ranking, but it is a ranking where you can choose your own priorities, and I. Um, I really love that. Yeah. So you can say, okay, well, I want to do. Uh, what do I want to do? Well, civil engineering. That's what I said. Huh? And um, so uh, I want to do. So you have to decide whether you want to go for a university of applied science, or for a university. Uh, let's say we go for the universities. And. Um, well, then you have to log in here, but it's free. Yeah, so for for this time, you can use my account. I'm very generous here. Um, yeah, so uh, you can see, okay, the, the ranking for, for civil engineering. Um, and you can adjust your own priorities. Yeah, you can change the criteria. You can say, look here now, it is very much student focused. Yeah, so how happy are the students with their uh, situation? I can scale in, maybe that's good for you. Uh, how happy are the students with the situation? Uh, how good is the support for the students? Um, the total number of students here seems to be a benefit. I, I don't quite see that. Maybe a small university is better for you. Um, how good is the contact with the work environment? Yeah, D does the university connect the bachelor students uh, with the work environment? Is there a lot of practical training involved? Um, yeah, maybe you want a, a town with lots of students. Yeah, a proportion of students should be high in your town. You want uh, a very international city, or. Uh, Maybe we want uh, a cheap accommodation. We don't want to live in a town where it's super expensive to pay the rent. Yeah, so you can set your own criteria. And uh, now you can sort that. And you see that, for instance, uh, Uni Kassel is in the top group for our uh, criteria now. Yeah, the study situation is in the top group. Um, good contact with the work environment uh, for bachelors, lots of support for the students, um, a high proportion of international students in the town, and uh, the rent is typically very affordable. Yeah, so this is this can be your very private ranking. Yeah, so as I said, uh, the beauty of this specific. Uh, ranking is that you can use your own criteria. Yeah, it's not about the academic reputation worldwide. Yeah, usually the um, the rankings that you find, Times Higher Education ranking or something like that, they all focus on scientists. Yeah, what do other scientists say about this university? And the typical scientists doesn't know the University of Cottbus Senftenberg. Yeah? I mean, honestly, it's a small university in a small town, and nobody abroad knows the University of Cottbus Senftenberg. So if you ask somebody in New York, they will probably not know it. But as you can see, you can get very good education there and very good support. Yeah? So if you really want to focus on your own priorities, I absolutely recommend um, this type of ranking. Yeah, so we can, yeah, you can see you can pick all kind of uh, courses here and uh, you can, well, put up your own ranking. Yeah, so in uh, economics, uh, Bayreuth and Mannheim and Osnabrück are doing very well. 
rather small uh, cities, and uh, then in the next row you get the big ones like Berlin, Bonn, Göttingen. Yeah? But the top ones are actually less known, and in this case I think they are uh, doing a very good uh, job. Now it seems to be that all your uh, important questions uh, have been answered. Um, yeah, I can I can only encourage you to uh, stay in touch with us. I mean, you have already found uh, our um, Facebook page. If you're on Facebook, uh, we are on Twitter, we are on Line, and uh, we have our um, our website at uh, d a a d o r uh, well here d a d o r t h yeah um, and uh, if if you have any complicated questions we can also set up uh, a, a video session and uh, we can we can work on your questions uh, through zoom or through Adobe Connect or uh, Google Meet or Facebook or yeah so really uh, don't don't hesitate uh, just get in touch with us and uh, I also try to cooperate with the um, advisors with the um, university counselors and IB coordinators at the IB schools so uh, a shout out again to them yeah, many of them already know, but if they don't, if you have any questions, if you have any students who are interested in studying in Germany and you have questions where you feel uncomfortable or not sure, uh, you can really forward those questions or uh, the entire student uh, to our office and we'll, we'll try to help as good as we can. Yeah, okay. So... Um, it seems like all questions have been answered. So I would say um, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thanks, Kun Prakakel, Kun Isarapon in the background. And uh, yeah, I would uh, I would love to hear from you uh, if you have any any questions. And uh, let's stay in touch. Bye.